All right. Is 29 too old? Hey there, Billy Bandwagon. For those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, I've uh, been going by Bill Bandwagon watching the Red Sox. And uh, I, I got to tell you right now, I am not Bill Bandwagon anymore after fucking aging 30 years watching all of these goddamn games. I am back to die hard. I'm not die hard. Maybe I am. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back to watching uh, baseball. We'll see. The jury is out. But uh, Bill Bandwagon left after we lost two games in a row. And there was the obstruction call. He took off. And diehard Bill fucking hung around. All right. Anyways, first he says, I just want to say love the podcast and your comedy specials. Well, thank you very much. Uh, he goes, my question. Do you think 29 is too old to, to start doing stand-up? Um, I have a decent full-time job as a paralegal and consider myself lucky to be gainfully employed. However, life in an office is miserable and it gets worse as the years pile on. I'm not quitting anytime soon, but I've thought about starting to try open mics to see if I'm any good and maybe, and maybe what, maybe help me be a little more outgoing. What do you think? Is it still possible when you're damn near 30? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Dude, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is the thing. Yeah, don't quit your day job. That's what I did. I, I had a day job. And I was like, let me try this stand-up thing. And I started doing it. And I immediately loved it. And I just kept working on it and working on it working on it. But I didn't leave my day job until um, – I actually kept my day job when I could have left it. I was making enough money where I could live, but I kept my day job because I knew I was moving down to New York and I wanted to save up some money so I could um, – because I knew that I, I you know, I wasn't going to show up in New York. And they, oh, great, this fucking guy we don't know is here. Let's give him a bunch of stage time. I knew I was going to have to struggle. So I would absolutely 100% – if you're thinking about trying it, definitely try Even if you just do it one time, you did it. You did it. I went skydiving one time. I ever tell you guys that story? I went skydiving one time. I did a static line jump in Pepperell, Massachusetts back in the day. And uh, I almost had a problem. They said, sit in the door. It was sit in the door, get out, go. So you sit in the door. They open the door to the plane. You sit in the door. And then when they say, get out. You put your feet, you put one foot, your left foot on this, almost looks like an engine mount that's above one of the wheels of this fucking plane. And then you're hanging on <laughs> to the support for the wing that is above the fucking plane. You're basically like a goddamn wing walker. And then it'd be basically if you, if you leaned up against a bar, if you put your body at a 45 degree angle and you leaned up against the bar in the upright push-up position and then you went down like you were coming down to the floor. That's basically the position you're in. Like you're down to the floor except it's the support to the wing. And then you have one foot on the engine, what looks like an engine mount. And then you have another foot pointed straight out behind you. Because what you're going to do, it says, get, you know, sit in the door, get out, and go. When he slaps your shoulder, you let go of the fucking plane, which makes no fucking sense. And then you bring that other leg up parallel to where your other one was sitting out and then you arc all right and what i did was a static line jump so i don't have to pull the chute but i don't have anybody with me it's a static line jump and as you let go it pulls your chute and you and you go arc 1000 2 1000 3 1000 look if nothing look reach pull i still remember that shit like it was yesterday 2 1000 3 1000 and it's look you turn to see your parachute to see if it's opened, if it's open properly, properly. But look, if nothing, look. You look down to where your reserve is because if you, if you don't look where it is for some reason, you might not be able to grab it. So look, if nothing, look, reach, pull, and then you pull your reserve chute. And hopefully that thing fucking opens, or you're gonna bounce. So he he was going sit in the door, and I was like, what? He's going sit in the door. I thought he said close the door. He's going sit, and I find okay. So sit in the door. So I sit in the door. And then he goes, get out. I got out. And then he said, go. And when I let go, I didn't arc. I tried to grab for something and I started doing front flips as my chute was coming out. And I felt it going by the inside of my right leg. I felt this something 
touched my right thigh, and I was going, oh, my God, I'm going to get, I'm going to get wound up in this fucking thing. And uh, I don't know who packed that shoot, but thank God it fucking came out. And then you had like a little transistor radio or some shit on your shoulder. And then they just talked you down, you know, right toggle, left toggle. You had to pull it all the way down to your knee. And I remember there was this fat chick in the class and she couldn't get it around her ass. And she ended up landing across the street in a pile of loom and she dislocated her knee. Uh, fortunately, that did not happen for me. And it was uh, it was pretty awesome. But I did it that one time. Never needed to do it again. And uh, I have the story. I have the experience. So maybe stand up will just be that for you. Um, or you could have the experience that I had where the first time I walked to the microphone, I felt like I was like an out of body experience. Like I was watching myself do it. And, um, it was, uh, I found my calling in life, which is probably one of the most exciting things other than finding the person you're supposed to be with in life. So I got to tell you this, dude, if you're in your office every day and it, and it, it is a miserable thing that could mean that you're not you don't have the right job or you need some sort of outlet. Maybe you're working too hard and maybe just going out and doing this one night and kind of remembering to try that going out and trying new things is a fun thing to do. That you don't have to just be 100 percent about your career. That's a, I think that's the thing a lot of fucking adults forget to do. After a while, and you have like that thing, once you get your life down, you know, I get up at this hour, I drive down this street, I go to work, I do the same thing every day, I'm comfortable, I know everybody, there's no new challenges, and then no one's going to make fun of me like they did on the playground and punch me in the face for having freckles, right? You can really get caught in that, and then you get in a rut. So I don't know if you're just in a rut with work or whatever, but uh, I would definitely recommend trying... uh Going out and trying to stand up. Believe me, dude. It's, uh, I'm having more fun with it than I ever had. And I'm 22 years in. And I've, I never feel like, uh, well, I've had some struggles, you know. But you do with anything. But when I'm on stage doing it, I never feel like, um, I don't feel like how you feel in the office. But I'm not going to lie to you. Before I started selling tickets, you would when, you, when it was just a fucking awful show. And there was no security and everything. But, you know, anything worth having, you, you know, if it was fucking easy, everybody would do it. So anyways, I'm getting too long-winded here. Go out and try it.